Now, a few important considerations for PDFs or probability density functions. If you've actually gained your PDF because you differentiated a CDF, you need to make sure you have checked that it's actually differentiable across its whole domain. So two things that make a function not differentiable is if it has sharp corners, and that's what you might see on a piecewise sort of function, or on a function with discrete data, because don't forget with discrete data, the PDF, the polygon is actually made up of straight lines that do have sharp corners on them. And that explains why we can't use that process of integration with discrete data. We can only use it for continuous data. But also there could be gaps when you're looking at functions that have got piecewise sections. So think that through. Make sure it is differentiable before you actually go ahead and differentiate it to find your PDF. Another thing with the notation, we've seen that if you differentiate, in other words, you DDX something, if you differentiate big F of X, and this is our primitive function or our CDF, Another way of writing that would be to just put a little dash on it. That means you've differentiated it, right? Now, we don't often use this notation. It looks a bit awkward because it's got the big F, meaning it's been integrated, but it's also got the dash, meaning it's been differentiated. All of that evens out to be little f of x. And that makes sense if you consider, yes, we had to differentiate this to get that. But just be aware that this notation could pop up and could confuse you. So popping it down in your notes is a good idea. We have found that the CDF, big F of X, is actually the signed area function of the PDF. Now, remember what our definition was earlier in the year of a signed area function. When we find a definite integral, we can reason that the value of that integral might be the same as the area, or it might not. Now, what made an area be the exact same as the size of the integral, and what made it be a little bit different? Areas underneath the curve, right? So you learned earlier in the year that if you've got some function like this and you integrate it from, say, here to here, then this part will be positive, um, the value of the, the definite integral will be positive, and this part will be negative, and you need to um, subtract this one from that one to get the value of the integral. Whereas if you want the area, then you need to just find the absolute value of this integral and the absolute value of this one, which will be positive anyway, and add them together. Now, when you're working with PDFs, you're gonna find that they are always above the x-axis, so you don't have that problem with the negatives, but what we're really looking at then when we find the value of the definite integral is we're finding the area there. Now, that's a really important concept because you might have a PDF where you haven't actually found an equation for the line, or you can't be bothered doing so. But if you know it looks like this and you're trying to find the value of the definite integral in here, then you might just be able to use area formula. So you can see that this is a trapezium, you could throw the area of trapezium at it, or you could break it up into a rectangle and a triangle and find the area of it that way. And finding the signed area is going to be equivalent to finding the integral that you're after between those bounds A and B. Now, I've said this makes sense as a concept, but it's a little bit awkward to use. Why would it be awkward to use? Well, if we're saying that our whole experiment is between the bounds A and B, then we should know really that the probability of our variable lying between these is actually going to be 1. Now, if we want to sub in some other value of x, and I think it's helpful to look down at this picture down the bottom, and say, all right, I've got my lower bound A and my upper bound B, and here is my PDF. I can tell because it's got little f of t here. Why have I used t? I'll get to that in a moment. But if I want to find the value of um, an, an area under the curve that's just in part of it here, it makes sense that this x could move around. Okay, so in my formula, I've got to allow for it to be able to move. And if I've got a function of x, and I'm also try trying to put in a value of x, we can end up with a lot of x's and it might get confusing. So here we've changed the notation a little bit and we've said if we want to find the CDF, and remember what that means is the probability that x is less than or equal to some value of x where we get to move x and where we know that x must be between a lower and an upper bound, like this, then we know that all we need to do is find the area 
under the curve from the lower bound A up to the upper bound X. And instead of writing f of x dx, we just write f of t dt. And wherever there were x's in the formula, we put t's and we different, sorry, we integrate with respect to t because it just makes the working a little bit simpler. So these are very similar, just a slight difference there in the notation. Now, super important point, a PDF must meet these two conditions. And these conditions are super important because a lot of the questions you'll get about PDFs are getting you to prove either one of these conditions or the other to answer some kind of question. So the first one is that the PDF or the value of the PDF must be greater than zero. In other words, it has to lie above the horizontal axis. It can't go down here. Now, why is that? Well, because it's listing the probability of any one outcome occurring. And even though we can't, using integrals, find the exact probability of any one outcome, we have to use ranges, still it makes sense that all the probabilities must be positive. They've got to be between zero and one. So our graph can never go up above one here, and it can never go down below zero either. Now, it also makes sense that if we take the integral, the definite integral from a up to b of f of t, we should get one. So in other words, this entire area here, if I shade it back here, a should equal 1. And of course, that's just because all probabilities in a certain experiment have to add to 